Hamza, in, uh, you know, in that lecture that you gave, you mentioned this uh, poem of Shakespeare. Can you, can you, can you, I mean, it's just my curiosity. I'm coming here as a student right now. Um, you mentioned it's, it's like, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the expense of spirit in a, in waste, a waste of, of shame is lust in actual so action, action, lust. action yeah. lust is perjured, yeah. murder is bloody, full, bloody of blame. full of blame, savage, savage extreme, extreme rude, rude, cruel, cruel, not to trust, trust. enjoyed no sooner but despised, despised fate. straight, past reason hunted and no sooner had, past reason hated as a swallowed bait. On purpose laid to make it's the taker mad, mad, mad in, pursuit. in pursuit in possession. So had having in quest to have extreme a bliss in proof and proved a very well before a joy proposed behind a dream. Behind a dream. In the last two lines, all, all this, this world well knows, yet, yet none, none knows well. well to shun mm. the heaven, yeah, leads to this hell. Yeah, yeah. To, to shun Great the heaven home. leads men to this hell. Can you, you mention a hadith about that? Can you mention that? It was a beautiful. You said before, this before. Poem. Before you guys mentioned the hadith, I I, I think we need to, we need a sharah of this poem a little bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, no, I mean he's he's talking about the state of lust, mm. and even when he begins at the expense of spirit. So spirit is, you know, Shakespeare loved puns. So there's a double entendre because spirit means ruach, but it also meant semen, you know, because they believed that they believed in this idea of the homunculus, you know, that the the there was a the the little human was contained in the semen. Mm -hmm. So the expense of spirits uh, is is wasting your semen in lust. So it's the you know the idea is that a human being in a state of lust is they've lost their minds wow mm. and 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 then they'll they'll do crazy things in that state i mean the date rape is a major problem in american universities and date rape is usually occurs when the couple gets into what they call heavy petting you know where where they're and and, and so men once they're in that state they're no longer in a kind of rational mode they're in more of a Imam Shafi famously said that all of knowledge is lost between the two thighs of of uh, of a woman. You know what he meant. You know, the, in fact, in Arabic, I mean, uh, the the in Arabic, mehbab, which is one of the words for a woman's private parts, means the place of stupidity, like the habal. You know, ahbal is somebody's stupid. And so the idea of people that are in a lustful state, they've lost their intelligence mm. and they're not thinking rationally. And that's why Islam guards and protects because lust is important as, as a human uh, phenomenon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended that we procreate and you can't do that without desire. But that mm. desire has to be um, elevated and it's elevated through uh, through marriage, through intimacy uh, that involves care and concern for the two partners. That it's not simply um, onanistic. Uh, it's not simply pleasure for pleasure's sake. Mm -hmm. That there's a mutuality in the relationship. And so, you know, I think what he's saying there is really that this is a way men go astray, and then, you know, it's. It, before it's like this amazing thing and afterwards it's just a dream all you have is a memory of something that it's it, like all pleasure it's completely ephemeral mm. and, and just like i mean you can eat uh you can eat, it's amazing how people can consume food purely for pleasure and then they have indigestion for hours afterwards so they suffer for, because of this Desire. Temporary pleasure. Yeah. And, and lust is like that. Because one of the things about Mausia is Mausia is always followed by remorse. And obedience is always followed by joy. Mm -hmm. So before a joy proposed, you know, it's something, oh, I'm going to get some pleasure out of this. It's going to be joyful. But afterwards, it's you know, no sooner had, it's despised it straight. Like you have, and then it's oh. What, what was the person thinking? So he's really talking about that state of Masiya.
you know, that, that uh, which, which has always been a problem in Western culture, partly because of the mixing of men and women in ways that Islamic civilization did not encourage for that reason, because they, they did not want a breakdown of that relationship. And there's a very important book by Unwin, who was a, um, a professor at Cambridge. He wasn't a, a, a religious person. He was an anthropologist. He wrote it in 1934. It's called Sex and Culture. And what he shows in that book is that when, when sexual um, licentiousness is released into a culture, it'll, be, that, that it'll destroy it within three generations. Wow. So that, in today's culture, it's all sexualized. It's completely sexualized. And yeah. that's why they're not producing any high culture. There's no high art because he shows how you it's the sublimation of those appetites that allow for high culture to be produced. Once you once you uh, once you fall into licentiousness, both gluttony and lust, you lose all of the uh, the higher um, desires for for uh, great poetry. I mean, who, who are the great poets today? Hmm. Rappers. Who, who are the great yeah. novelists? Seriously, who are the great yeah. novelists? Because, I mean, I, if you read the great novelists of Russia, wh where are the Dostoevskys? Where are the Tolstoys? Where are the Turgenevs? You know, mm. where are the Rumis? Where are the Sadis? Where are the Hafiz? I mean, we had so many of those type people. Where are they now? So, so once this culture falls into appetites, there's not much left.